Air compressors are powerful and essential in many work sites, but if handled incorrectly, they can be dangerous and even deadly. In this video, we'll be taking you through the safe operating procedure every operator should follow to keep things running smoothly and safely. Hello and welcome to My Safety Help, your go-to source for all things health and safety. I'm Dylan Stan and in today's video we are diving into another common piece of equipment, the air compressor. Used safely, it is an invaluable tool. However, improper operation can lead to accidents and injuries. Before we get started, if you are new to the channel, please be sure to click that subscribe button and like the video. It really helps the channel a lot. Now, let's get this video started. This SOP provides comprehensive guidelines to ensure the safe operation of air compressors, minimizing risks and promoting a safe work environment. This safe operating procedure applies to all company personnel tasked with operating air compressors for general use. It aims to ensure the health and safety of individuals while minimizing the risks of incidents, injuries and environmental hazards. The authority for implementing and enforcing this SOP lies with the designated authority or department. Management provides necessary resources and designates qualified personnel to operate air compressors. The safety officer is responsible for effectiveness and ensuring procedures are adhered to. Maintenance personnel are also responsible for routine maintenance and inspections. All personnel operating air compressors are responsible for performing work safely. This is where things get more specific to the task. In order to handle potential hazards before undertaking work, each and every one of these are to be assessed properly. Behavioral, improper operation, peer pressure or not following processes. Biological, persons can be exposed to hazards. Electrical, hazards when connecting plugs and the likes. Environmental, work must take place in a ventilated area that has safe lighting and that any loud sounds are checked. Ergonomic, the task is to be undertaken in a safe way that limits ergonomic hazards. Physical, a failure in equipment or incorrect procedure. As per the risk assessment, a number of those are considered substantial. Now, let's have a look at one of the highest risks in the form of a behavioral hazard. Improper or incorrect work practices conducted. Person is exposed to air compressor hazards by ignoring good practices of wearing correct safety equipment properly, causing an incident and injury to themselves or others, resulting in possible property damage of 100,000 Rand and upwards, possible wrenching trauma such as sprains or strains, possible impact trauma such as bumps, bruises and head injuries and possible penetration wounds, possible fractures, possible temporary disablement or possible fatalities. With those potential hazards, it's important to use the appropriate PPE, which for this tasks are hearing protection, eye protection, overalls, foot protection, hand protection and a dust mask. When you begin using the compressor, there are a number of things to check beforehand and should be followed in good practice. This includes our pre-task checks such as equipment, power, surroundings, a review of procedure and other checks listed. How to conduct the task. Post-task checks for what to do after the process. Shutdown equipment and hazard inspections. Lastly, and related to the above, housekeeping of the area during operation and after. It's important to note that safety factors that must be kept in mind while working, so these should always be considered throughout operation. This includes PPE, fire safety, electrical safety and environmental protection. That includes ergonomic considerations, equipment safety and what to do in the event of an emergency. Know your limitations. Shutdown procedures and medical attention is key, in addition to handling any contamination. The document then outlines various safety protocols and control measures that come as recommendations to reduce the risk to the worker. 
with engineering controls, this process being extraction fans and ventilation systems in any enclosed area to limit risk, as well as pressure release valves on all pressure vessels, electrical, hand, respiratory and footwear control PPE is imported. And lastly, we have our final section of the SOP. These final sections cover related documentations, the importance of reviewing and updating the SOP, mandatory training procedures for all relevant personnel, keeping records of incidents, tracking revisions to the document, and ensuring proper communication and understanding of the SOP. By adhering to these guidelines and maintaining a focus on the various aspects of our work will make all the difference to ensure the health and safety of the company and its personnel. Thank you for watching today's video. If you found today's video helpful, please leave it a like and share it with your colleagues. If you haven't already, please kick that subscribe button as to never miss another My Safety Hub video. Leave us a comment down below if you have any questions or insights you'd like us to share. And as always, stay safe, stay inspired, and until next time, take care.